right. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is our very, very first virtual event. I uh, want to thank you for being here. We're all getting uh, adjusted to this strange and bold new world. So um, we, we hope that uh, this is a, a good first attempt at returning to some level of normalcy. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stress out there for people. And uh, uh, we say, you know, normally you'd have cookies with us uh, or some sort of snack during these artist events. Uh, so if you have cookies, now's a good time to give a, grab a cookie uh, for the program. Uh, for those of you who may not know the organization, uh, we are Maryland Milestones, uh, also known sometimes as Anacostia Trails Heritage Area. We're a regional tourism program that promotes and preserves history, art, culture, and natural resources. We work with a variety of partners on projects and grants to bring about uh, economic development through tourism. Uh, and we currently cover the area of Northern Prince George's County. And uh, when we things return to normal, um, such as they are, we hope that you come to our Heritage Center located within the Pyramid Atlantic Arts Center in Hyattsville uh, to see any of our art shows. The next one um, that we're hoping to have up um, will be going up, we think, probably in July. Um, all of that is very up for discussion. Um, we did want to mention, um, in addition to our, um, our, our artist work and our work with our partners, we've been recently um, putting out uh, videos called Three Minute Milestones. Uh, and if you haven't seen those, we encourage you to check them. Uh, we've been posting them to Facebook and Twitter, but they're also available on our website and through YouTube. If you look up Three Minute Milestones, um, or just Maryland Milestones. Uh, and uh, the next one will come out tomorrow on the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. And um, they've been fantastic. They've been a lot of fun to do and we're always looking for uh, new and interesting things to cover. All right, now we've, we've dealt with the official business. So um, let's go ahead and shift to the reason that we're here. Uh, like I said, this is our first time doing this. So please bear with us as we go. I'm going to be uh, handing off this presentation to Joel in a moment, um, and hopefully all that goes well. Um, we're we're both uh, very anxious and uh, excited about how this is all going to happen. Um, so that is all I have from my side of things. All right, we're going to hopefully hand this over to Joel. Um, and um, there we go. So there we go. That should be the screen that everybody sees. Should be the roadside last gasps. And uh, Joel, I think you might need to unmute yourself, unless I have to do it. No, I'm unmuted. You can hear me, right? Ah, uh, there you are. Fantastic. Hello, everybody. I'm going to be uh, on video for just a second here so you can see what I look like. And for those of you who don't know me, um, uh, thanks a lot, Aaron. I'm really excited to be doing this. Uh, thank you, everybody, for signing up for this webinar. Um, Originally, as you know, uh, it was supposed to be an in-person talk tonight at the, the gallery. And uh, so this allows us, this technology allows us to meet and everybody stay safe. And um, I'm still uh, trying to figure it out myself. So there might be a few glitches and uh, just bear with us. So here we go with, with my uh, presentation. I'm gonna turn off the video. And, uh, so it's a uh, roadside last gasp. Uh, this is an exhibit up at the uh, Maryland Milestones Heritage Center Gallery. Some of you might have come to the opening. And if you didn't, uh, this is maybe the next best thing. I'll go through um, all the, the paintings I've done. And as Aaron mentioned, it's in the Pyramid Atlantic building. Um, and it's uh, an organization that uh, it, is mainly does uh, printmaking and workshops and so on. And uh, Aaron's office and museum and heritage center is uh, based inside the uh, heritage or inside the Pyramid Atlantic. So um, you could go look in the window uh, and see the paintings, but uh, um, you know this way you could see them uh, without the brush strokes. Um, so let's see here. All right, this is what the exhibit looks like, the layout, and um, 
this show was open for about a month before it closed on March 16th due to the COVID-19 precautions. And um, there are nine paintings on a theme, mostly of dilapidated buildings. Uh, nearly all the buildings are gone now. Some uh, have changed, and but most are on Route 1 in College Park or in the Laurel area of Maryland. So, you know, it's appropriate that it's in this gallery because it's kind of a, a focus of uh, Maryland milestones to uh, promote history of the area and trails, including roads. So um, I think it, I'm really glad to, to have the exhibit there. Um, my wife and I moved from uh, Arizona to this area about uh, 18 years ago when I took a position with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And we bought a house in University Park, a few houses from Route 1 which was really run down at the time. And I began photographing the state of these buildings, um, which, uh, you know, attracted, uh, it was, they were attractive to me for some reason. I don't really know why, or I didn't know why at the time. Um, I could tell they were, used to be part of a more thriving commercial strip, but didn't know much about it. So now, of course, you see a huge transformation of this area with new high-rise buildings in College Park for uh, much of it for student housing for the University of Maryland. And so I'm gonna go through a little bit of my background, uh, also what I've done a little bit with art and some, and I'm gonna be inserting some local history as I explain each painting. So we had the opening reception on February 9th and uh, it was pretty well attended. I really want to thank Aaron Markovich and Sally Davies uh, for their help in putting together the exhibit, uh, a solo exhibit. I was very lucky to, and grateful to, to have in their, in their gallery. These are some slides from the opening and Aaron uh, hanging the, the paintings. And then later that month, uh, at the end of February, uh, Pyramid Atlantic had a, a large fundraiser party called the Highball. And uh, coincidentally, the, the theme was roadside attraction. And uh, so it was, you know, really appropriate uh, with, with my theme. And uh, they even put this, uh, let me see if I can use the pointer here. They, in, right here, they put this uh, Triumph convertible inside the gallery. Uh, it was kind of tough to get it in there, but um, it really added to the mystique of the roadside. A little bit about my background. Um, I my background is in science, uh, particularly natural science, and I have a degree in entomology. I worked for the De U.S. Department of Agriculture for 35 years. The agency was uh, called Plant Protection and Quarantine, and this is the agency that's concerned with invasive plant pests like insects and plant diseases. Uh, I worked in various locations, Los Angeles, at the seaport and the airport, and I worked on the the uh, border with Mexico in Nogales, Arizona as a plant pathologist. This was before I moved here. Um, I didn't do illustration for USDA as my job, but um, I did because I was uh, working with a lot of really interesting insects and subject matter, I, I did uh, do a lot of illustrations. Um, and, and I did this logo for the agency. It was kind of unofficial, but it sort of shows the variety of plant pests that, um, that we were trying to keep out. And um, then I did a lot of illustration of these pests. This is the spotted lanternfly, which was found in uh, Pennsylvania about eight years ago. It came from China and it's working its way into Maryland now. And so um, these are some other illustrations I've done. I've had quite a few published in uh, journals and, and uh, museums and, and uh, books. And I'm still doing some of this, but also, um, since high school, I've been painting and um, I did uh, these urban landscapes when I lived in Arizona. These are from uh, Arizona and Texas and uh, sort of uh, along the lines of the, the work I'm doing now with the buildings. Uh, when I moved to uh, University Park in Maryland, uh, they had their uh, 75th anniversary in, uh, in 2011 and I did these banners that are you can see them now in Route 1, uh, hanging on the telephone poles. They're um, the various houses or you know, important houses in University Park. 
And uh, so these were all done uh, with pen and ink and with digital color. But, uh, you know, I uh, came to, to Maryland for some training in 1995, and it was at the uh, Beltsville Agricultural Center. And uh, this is my first introduction to Route 1 in Maryland. So I um, stayed at the uh, Holiday Inn, and it's right right near where the Ikea is now. And there was this building that uh, was, you know, overgrown and really uh, interesting. And I didn't know what it was, but um, I took a lot of pictures of it. And there was uh, a sign saying it was the site of Rhodes Tavern and it, George Washington didn't sleep there, but he did dine there. So um, this was, uh, you know, really interesting. And uh, I learned about much more about it later. Let's see, so actually um, this road, uh, Route 1 goes from, goes all the way up and down the East Coast now, but originally um, the first leg of it was from Virginia to Philadelphia back in the 1790s. And there were many taverns along that route for weary travelers to stay and get refreshment. Uh, a lot of the details of this are in uh, Aaron Markovich's Arcadia Press book on Route 1 from Baltimore to uh, Washington, D.C. In 1812, it was established by the state of Maryland as the Baltimore-Washington Turnpike. And then uh, in 1915, it was, it was paved. And what's interesting about this building is um, you know, when I saw it, it kind of looked like this, although it was even more uh, decrepit. The, uh, the, a lot of the roofs were gone off of these cottages that were on the side. And uh, by the time I saw it, it was more like, like uh, the, the one in the lower right uh, from 1998. And there was a, a tornado that came through and did a lot of damage to the building. And then eventually, even though it was on the uh, Register of Historic Places, uh, they, they deemed it unsafe and, and it was demolished in 2001. But in its heyday, this, uh, this place uh, had um, a lot of these cottages. It was in, in the 1940s, they, they, they changed the name of it to Delhaven White House Motel and Cottages. And it was uh, typical of a lot of the um, development that happened along Route 1, you know, that centered around the automobile. And, People were, would drive up and down the East Coast on Route 1 and stay in these uh, motor courts. And uh, originally it started out as camps. And uh, these are postcards I've collected. I've collected postcards since the 1970s. And uh, um, so these are the ones that I've found uh, that show the Del Haven White House uh, Motel. And what's interesting too is in Aaron's uh, Heritage Center, he has this uh, White House neon sign, and that comes from the sign for Del Haven. It was found in the in the bushes, I guess, uh, when when they were about to tear down the uh, the building, and somebody donated it to the museum and he had the neon restored. And this is the time during segregation, and the the hotel was uh, uh, the blacks were not allowed to stay there, and um, in fact, none of the establishments along Route 1 and College Park were listed in the Green Book, which is what, you know, there was a movie about the Green Book within the last couple of years. And you know, this is where African-Americans could find out where they could stay uh, when they were driving around the country. And the, the White House was a kind of a code that this was only for whites, apparently. So in... At this time, uh, the early 2000s, I, I saw a lot of these dilapidated buildings along Route 1. It looked, and it was intriguing to me. I took a, a lot of photographs, mostly slides. And these were, a lot of them were left over from this time period in 1960s, uh, 1950s, 1960s, a lot of gas stations and diners and, and, and uh, motels and motor courts. And I just sort of sat on the pictures, but then, um, I did see some buildings that were, I didn't really know what they were. I, they were, I was attracted to them because this one in particular, which is uh, on the border between Beltsville and Laurel. And it, uh, you know, it was a very colorful building. Um, I didn't know anything about it, except 
there were a lot of car lots around it and uh, took took photographs. I was interested in the way the vegetation was taking over and, and the colors. And um, eventually this was torn down. Uh, it's where the intercounty connector came in. And, uh, you know, this uh, cross county freeway that they built. Um, I called it Yantas Usadas, which means used tires. I think uh, the, the colors tell me that it's probably owned by a Mexican American businessman who, uh, you know, uh, wanted to paint the colors of the Mexican flag. And, uh, and I don't know for sure, but, um, you know, Aaron thinks that uh, at one time this was a, a uh, he thinks he's seen a photograph that this was a, um, a chicken restaurant. But I was interested in the in the plants, and I you know I tried to show them as you know the species that that they are you know like this uh, thistle here, which is giving off some of the seeds, and uh, miner's lettuce and foxtail, and uh, you know they're not it's not just foliage. I try to paint them as recognizable plants, and that's from my scientific illustration background. So the next painting I did uh, was of the little tavern on Route 1 in College Park. And uh, here again, it's the theme of you know nature taking over. I was intrigued by this vacant uh, building. It had this catalpa tree and uh, Chinese elm growing out of the side of it. And um, it was abandoned at that time, although um, it wasn't a little tavern hamburger place when I saw it. It was uh, it had been a few other restaurants and none of them seemed to make it. But, um, you know, it's it's this uh, white porcelain panels uh, in a sort of a pseudo Tudor cottage style. And uh, in addition to the plants, I was interested in all this, all these mechanical doodads around it, the, the electrical connections and the, the sign, because this adds a certain amount of realism. Uh, this turned out to be torn down and it's the future side of the, uh, College Park City Hall. But what, what attracts me to these buildings is how the how weathering and the entropy take over and, um, and when they're not cared for and they succumb to the elements. And well, this is not as significant architecturally as Roman ruins. There were a lot of uh, artists in the 18th century that painted uh, Roman ruins uh, that were, you know, over, being overtaken by vegetation. And it had a lot of meaning and you know, it was beautiful uh, to show, but more recently photographers um, have depicted decaying historic buildings in Detroit and, uh, you know, buildings around Chernobyl after the disaster there. And there's a Pennsylvania photographer named Matthew Christopher who published books called Abandoned America, showing decaying interiors of decrepit theaters, hospitals, and mental institutions. And so this is kind of along those lines. And, um, you know, I tried to kind of continue with this theme, but, uh, you know, about the time I, I this, this painting, uh, I sold it and uh, the guys who bought it have allowed it to be shown in the exhibit. So um, about the time I, and I thank them for that, I, around about this time that I uh, sold it, I found out that they were going to tear down a little tavern and, uh, you know, I uh, contacted Aaron about it. He said it was the University of Maryland that, that owned it. It was, I guess it was donated to the University of Maryland. And he was trying to get them to save it. Um, they wanted to see if we could uh, have them turn it into something else, like an information kiosk, maybe to highlight the highway culture or coffee shop, even something, because it was uh, this unique, architecture about the only thing left from that time period and uh, but they they didn't and he also asked if we could uh, dismantle it and assemble it in a in another spot but they made it so difficult uh, bureaucratically and ex made it very expensive so um, we gave up on that and it was demolished in, in 2016. Well, I started uh, sort of Googling Route 1 and finding, I found this great resource, uh, a master's thesis written by Meredith Doris, and uh, she was at the University of Maryland, and she did a, a really amazing amount of research about the uh, hotels and, and tourist camps and so on along Route 1. 
And uh, I, you know, I read this with great interest. It talked a lot, a lot about the uh, kinds of buildings I was looking at, and 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 you know, I had a lot of, of her postcard collection. I'm going to show some of that uh, later in the talk. And also, Aaron, uh, he was frustrated by the loss of the little tavern in College Park, and so he started doing research on the uh, history of Route One from uh, Washington, D.C. To, to Baltimore. And, and so this book is available from Arcadia Press. I highly recommend it if you're interested. The other thing I wanted to highlight, I didn't really, I did not do any paintings of this, but I have a personal connection with it. It's the Folan Guest Home, which is uh, right across Route 1 from where I live. And uh, I know, I know uh, the woman who, who ran it, Kim Folan, and, um, in in Meredith's book, she or her dissertation, she has pictures of of uh, some of the buildings that were owned by Kim Kim's grandfather and grandparents. And there was a gas station down the hill where the 7-Eleven is now, and the Laundry World. And also there was a uh, the Maryland Inn, which was a restaurant, and, and they also had tourist cabins in the back. Um, these were you know eventually sold, and uh, this. Uh, Full and Guest House was built in the 1930s, and this, so something like three generations of Full and women have have run this guest house until recently, when Kim was uh, forced out, and uh, now the uh, building has been restored nicely, and it's the home of uh, some retired Catholic monks. But the, I helped her take the sign down. Uh, it was kind of a sad day, and uh, anyway, Meredith. Gore says that the, the College Park little tavern and this building uh, were kind of the last vestiges left from this uh, this roadside era in College Park. Um, this is this building is not on Route One, but it's nearby. It's in Riverdale. It's the S and J Bar, and um, it was a uh, neighborhood bar since the 1950s. Uh, a friend of mine commissioned this this watercolor and she lent it for the exhibit and uh there's a lot of interest in it because people have fond memories of it of spending time there um now it's uh, the uh, riviera tapas bar but originally um it was owned by the mayor of riverdale park guy tibiero and uh it was named after previous owners sarah price and her son jimmy and it, I guess originally it was a machine shop built in the, in the 1920s. So the next uh, next painting I've done is the Starlight Inn, and I was it had this distinctive star-shaped window, and I found out this is you know after it was before I lived here that it was a stripper bar, and uh, in the there's a account in the a newspaper in the 1980s where the, the city and many community members were not happy about this, this establishment and they, they have got petitions to try to have it closed. But uh, now it's it's been torn down. It's the site of this uh, enclave student housing building. And uh, right next to it was the Terrapin Taco House. Uh, and this, this is a, uh, it used to be called the Tippy Taco House, and which was a, a small chain restaurant um, that still exists in in Virginia, and uh, in Laurel there's uh, one called the Toucan Taco House, which has the same. Uh, it used to be Tippy's Taco, and they have the same same menu anyway. Um, this was a really interesting uh, building. I have reflections of construction. You can't really see it very well, but construction across the street and right before this building was torn down and uh, the sign here that says they're moving and they, they tried to open up somewhere else in College Park but it didn't make it. And then uh, another little tavern building up in Laurel that I did, I actually um, saw this before um, it was it was still a little tavern and it still served the burgers by the bag. This the chain was very much like White Castle that you see in the northeastern U.S. and uh, was started in the 1930s. Uh, there are many locations in Maryland, uh, Washington D.C. and Virginia. 
And this was one of the last ones uh, in existence. I think the actual last one was in Baltimore, but apparently, uh, it be, you know, when it became a donut shop, the owners of the former owners of Little Tavern gave the recipe for the hamburgers to the donut shop, and they did serve the the small slider hamburgers for a while. Now the next two paintings are not on Route One, but I included them because they're sort of the same theme. This one uh, was, uh, was I call it a round back, and I think it was a corner store uh, in Delaware. I saw it on the way when we were going to the beach and uh, took these pictures, uh, took pictures of it and then used it for a painting. Um, now it's gone. I found on Google Earth the site and it's completely gone. But I call it around back because, um, you know, you're out in the boonies and you stop at a gas station or a corner store and uh, you ask where the, where the restroom is, they tell you, oh, it's out around back. And then you have to kind of maneuver your way through this, you know, lot of junk and, you know, maybe not so clean bathroom, but it sort of reminded me of that. And uh, this one also, this is another one that's kind of on the same theme of, of diners, uh, abandoned diners. This is up in Pennsylvania near Harrisburg. And um, I found out that, you know, I saw an article about this. Uh, there was a controversy that they were trying to get the owner to fix it up or destroy it. And so I, I drove up there and took some pictures of it in, in the late afternoon. And the lighting was just right. And I, I think it, uh, you know, came out fairly nice with this wide perspective. And this is what it used to look like down below it was in the, at least 2011, it was called Don's Diner. Now my, the last painting I'm gonna talk about is um, this Quality Inn in uh, College Park on Route One. And normally I wouldn't paint a, you know, like a chain kind of franchise hotel, but this was really interesting because uh, they had it was right next to Plato's Diner, which uh, was in a fire and it was closed. And they fenced off the uh, the the little the uh, the diner and the Quality Inn because uh, they were going to demolish it and put up a big development. And uh, it took a long time. It was fenced off for for months and months, and then it started to spontaneously fall apart. And um, so you can see, I'm not gonna use the pointer because I don't know how I'll get out if I do it again, but uh, there's this, uh, you can see over where the facade has fallen off, there's this, this sort of black triangle. And that is the indication of a, of a roof that was on the previous iteration of this building. Um, and I'll show you in the next slide. These are from uh, Aaron's book and also Meredith's um, district, or, or dissertation and it shows um, this used to be called the Park University Hotel and uh, it, I think it was actually part of the uh, they call it uh, quality courts before quality Inn, and um, it had this zigzag roof built uh, in the sort of mid-century modern style uh, you know in the 60s and 70s and um, in the in the background on the the black and white photo, you'll see uh, the Howard Johnson's uh, restaurant. And that was where it would got converted to Plato's Diner later. But um, so that's really interesting. But if you go even further back and according to, to Maris, um, to work the, there, she had postcards of the uh, Lord Calvert Hotel that goes back to the 1930s. And it was uh, again, very much like the, um, uh, the Del Haven, uh, White House courts where you had these uh, cottages and a, and a central house. And it was on that same model of you know, people would, you know, stay in these. Uh, and so sometimes these little cottages had garages in the back and uh, it was really interesting, but that's all gone now. And uh, what you're seeing in this, it's a vacant lot now. And it's going to be this development with uh, student housing and hopefully uh, people want a Trader Joe's and you know uh, and it's going to be uh, you know this kind of mixed retail and uh, and condos anyway it, it's this kind of architecture that you're seeing now uh, in all over 
the country, you know, and in, in this area, you see it down on the, uh, the new waterfront. And um, it's nice, you know, it's uh, not very, that distinctive, but, you know, you kind of see it the same thing everywhere now. But, uh, but anyway, maybe in 50 or 75 years, it'll look quaint. Um, and so that's the end of my uh, paintings but I, in the show, but I wanted to show you what I'm working on right now. This is a, um, back in the 20s and 30s, there, the a and root beer, root beer chain had these barrels. You see on the right, uh, in the black and white photo, um, there were these uh, drive-ins that were shaped like uh, root beer barrels and they were made out of wood. And so most of them are gone now. Uh, I, I was out visiting in Arizona at Christmas time, and uh, my wife and I drove by this, and uh, uh, I took some pictures of it. So um, I'm in the process of painting it now. But uh, interestingly, uh, I went on the internet, and there's a lot of sites that document these kinds of roadside uh, establishments. So this one has had this is the same building that's had all kinds of different restaurants in it since it was a and w so you see on the right it was you know it was uh you know different kinds of mexican restaurants and so on and eventually it was uh you know put up for sale and then when I, by the time i saw it it's been vandalized and so um anyway i'm this this painting i'm working on the detail now uh, my the way i work is uh i might use several different photographs and I might change the composition, uh, move the foreground around to the background. I try to keep the building uh, pretty much accurate. But um, again, this is more of like a panoramic composition. And I'm, you know, I use the photographs, but I don't really consider it photorealism. I work a little, a lot more loose than that. But, uh, but anyway, um, that's you know, I just keep adding more detail, and then. Uh, you know, and then I, until I'm done. So um, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep uh, looking at uh, roadside establishments and and documenting them in my painting. So um, that's the end of my presentation, and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions that Aaron might have accumulated by now. That's great. Thank you, Joel. Um, so great. Oh, here's to... my here's oh. my contact information. Sorry, uh, and. Uh, Many of the paintings are for sale, and uh, you can go to the uh, the site, the Anacostia Trail site, and see the list of the paintings and the prices. But and then if you want to contact me, here's my contact information. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Um, for those of you who may have come in late, um, there we we are doing this webinar because we've had uh, situations where we have a lot of people over, talking over top of each other. So the way we're handling it this time is is that if you want to, you can ask a question. There should be a little question um, icon that you can uh, press to ask a question. Um, so we're gonna see if that works. Um, I know that there is a hand raise option, but I don't believe that I'm actually able to um, unmute people um, the way that this system is set up. So we're still working on it, but the question should be something that we see. So if you have a question, try that process and we will see what happens. Um, meanwhile, I was going to, uh, let's see here, we're going to shift back over to me for a second for my screen and, um, in an ideal world, you all will see the little acres. Oh, this is, I think that's the building that wow. was your tire shop. That's so, it. That, that felt like the right one to me with the awning and everything, um, with a fantastic neon fried chicken sign outside. Um, oh, that's fantastic. So. That was that was the one I think we were hoping to find. So yeah, I'm glad you found it. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, let's uh, and um, I did get uh, one of the questions uh, that did come uh, up uh, prior to this was how many people are participating because people are always interested in that. Um, this is actually one of our better attended uh, artist talks, so congratulations on that. And um, it is uh, we actually have uh, 20 participants and uh, two presenters, so. 22 total, um, and we've had a couple people drop in and out um, in, in the way that it goes. But um, 
that is a, a pretty good thing. All right, so the uh, question that uh, we received was uh, from Sharon, um, who asked, uh, what is your passion? What is your passion for roadside art? Well, I guess um, a lot of it goes back to uh, um, postcards that I've collected, and um, you know, this. Uh, you know, when I was young, I remember going on uh, trips with my parents, and uh, you know, staying in a lot of these kinds of motels. I mean, I, I we didn't go on Route 66, but we did drive from Anchorage, Alaska to Phoenix a couple of times because I live, I'm, that's where they moved from. And I, uh, we used to go back and forth to, to Idaho and we go through Las Vegas. And so anyway, um, I think it, it might go back to my childhood even. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I got interested in um, the postcards and then a, a painter named uh, John Bader who does diners almost exclusively and uh so the art part of it kind of comes in there and and i you know i wanted to do something besides uh insects and plants you know so uh, i started doing the, these buildings and also the neon signs all right so the next question we have is from brad who asked uh, what was the first roadside attraction you decided to depict? Um, I think it was the, uh, the, if you remember the slide where I had the neon sign, was the Sands Hotel with a palm tree. And uh, that's probably the first one. And that that's on uh, Van Buren Street in Phoenix, which is a lot like Route 1. It was a major uh highway before the they built the freeways and had tons of motels and uh you know uh restaurants and so on and uh you can still see some of it but most of it's gone now and i i have a lot of pictures from from there that um i plan on uh digging out mostly slides and uh digging out and, and trying to to paint so I'm, I'm gonna go back to and do more in arizona but that was the first one was that sand sign and i have a postcard of that hotel with which shows those palm trees when they were a lot younger <laughs> that's great um all right i the, if folks have another question um please do post it in the question section there we'll give uh, give everybody another minute or two um this is the time whenever we start to uh look for our cookies um uh, oh all right okay here's a follow-up from brad uh, any different themes you've noticed between Mid-Atlantic and American West? Well, you know, out West, you don't really see uh, a lot of these places like uh, Little Tavern or White Castle, and there's not as many diners. Um, you know, the, the Eastern U.S. has just, well, the most of them, are gone, but you know there used to be thousands of diners. You know, diners were created originally from old rail cars, and then you know they started uh, designing just just the diners. You know, with the chrome and um, and and selling. I mean, you could order kits, and there were, so some of those are out actually out west, but they're pretty rare. Um, that's that's the big difference. Um, you know, out west, you you actually in California. I used to live in California, and they have uh, a lot of these. Uh, you know, like there's one called Randy's Donuts, which was really close to the airport where I, where I worked. It's a giant donut on top of a of a of a drive-in donut stand, and so there's a lot of these uh, vernacular kind of buildings that were are larger than life. You know, like uh, yeah, I can't think of another one right now, but you know. Oh, also the large dinosaurs are you see those out west you know on the roadside attractions and um like a, an, in palm in the palm springs area between uh, los angeles and phoenix i used to drive that a lot and they had the large dinosaurs you don't see too much of that around here <laughs> i was on mute <laughs> Um, all right, so the next one is um, probably a sign that is near and dear to a lot of people that have traveled on Route 1, 
Uh, John asks, one of my favorite Route 1 neon signs is Vets Liquor in Beltsville. Have you thought about painting that one yet? Is that the one with the, the Confederate soldier on it? Uh, it is. Hang on here. I'm going to uh, pull it up and uh, share it. Um, let's see here. Change presenter back to me and show my screen. Yeah, I don't Question. know if that's a Confederate. No, that's that's a GI. It's not. I was thinking if it was, if it was a Confederate soldier, no, I would not paint it. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not considered that, but I I really do like that sign, and uh, it's it's weathered enough for me. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I I wouldn't want to paint a uh, restored neon sign. I like it when they're they're you know weathered and and uh, even if you, even if they have broken neon, I like that. <laughs> the thing I will note is is that um, first the the guy uh, his eyes lit up with these green lights in his eyeballs, which is always fantastic. Um, but the uh, yeah, as Brad says, the eyes have it. But the um, the the thing that I noticed when I went past there the other day, and this picture that I'm looking at now kind of confirms that is that um, I'm pretty sure that somebody has just done a big renovation to it and has done sort of a, a lousy job at it. Um, yeah. I, I'd have to go, I'd have to go back and look at it, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So. Uh, the other thing that's kind of neat, it's not a great sign, but in the background on that, there was a, uh, there's a place called Y2K and uh, mm -hmm. that's already very dated. I mean, it's not a great sign, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's an interesting stretch right through there, right near the, the bankies that is now closed. Right, unfortunately. All right, do we have any more questions? Um, give us another moment or two here. I'll, I'll just pop up a Laurel Diner for a few minutes um, for no particular reason. Uh, if not, I wanted to, um, while I'm waiting on that for just a moment, um, I'll mention again, um, the uh, we were the organizer, Maryland Milestones, Anacostia Trails Heritage Area. Um, we are the regional tourism program, uh, promote history, art, culture, and nature. Uh, we have a variety of grants that are now going out. Um, with this coronavirus situation, the Heritage Areas program has uh, offered a, um, a special emergency grant for nonprofits that are um, in the heritage tourism field. So if you know of a nonprofit that might be hurting, um, please pass their word along to us. We've heard especially from several arts organizations um, that are looking for funding, and um, we're going to continue to try to help them out. Additionally, we are working with um, some of the small businesses uh, that we know of, and we're gonna hopefully offer some sort of webinar or program for them uh, that might be interrelated small businesses in the tourism uh, world, restaurants and such. Um, <clears throat> so that is something that um, we're working on right now with uh, folks out of uh, Hyattsville. Um, and we're going to be putting out our um, uh, e-blast uh, tomorrow morning uh, with a variety of resources uh, that we've been uh, collecting from around. Again, we have um, our um, three-minute milestones uh, videos that we're producing. Uh, one of them will be on US1 since we just have piles and piles of pictures uh, that we like to share about this. And um, uh, we hope to be able to share that. We're also going to be working on the uh, Laurel uh, Railroad Station um, as well as, um, uh, let's see if I, I think I just had that picture up just a minute ago. There's the Laurel Railroad Station. Um, and um, we're going to be looking at that from a three minute milestone standpoint. Uh, we've got Bark, we've got Glendale Hospital um, and probably the Bel Air Stables. But if you yes. ever have any ideas for these kinds of videos, please send them along to me. Uh, you can always find me at Aaron at AnacostiaTrails.org. Um, so Joel, I don't have any more questions that have come. Um, so I don't know if you have any parting words that you wanna share. No, just uh, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate appreciate you calling in and uh, and listening. And uh, stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you again, Joel. Um, uh, thank you to uh, Sally, who um, has Sally Davies, who's our our, our gallery um, consultant, and she helped um, pull this all together. 
<clears throat> again, look for uh, new exhibits uh, when everything uh, allows us to open and the opportunity to do that. We hope you do come by and uh, thank you all for your time and um, have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Bye.